You know, in quite a few of my random facts videos, I've cited the Smash Wiki for whatever it was I was talking about. And whenever I do so, I find myself reading the wiki and learning a few small neat things here or there. Usually nothing I care to include in the video, but still interesting details. So very simply, I thought to myself, hey, what if I did only that for a video? Now, yes, I know what you might be thinking from your training in schools. Wikipedia is a spooky, scary, tertiary source, meaning it could hypothetically be edited to include nonsense, which surely makes it much less reliable than, you know, a random blog post from a decade ago. But not to worry, for any information I find here, I will be personally testing, because I need footage for the video. If this gets a good reception, it'll obviously become its own little mini-series. So for this first episode, I'm going to focus on the first row of fighters and their personalized wiki pages, and just talk about any neat information that's on there. And the information I'm going to be focusing on is the trivia section at the bottom of each wiki page, as that's where I found the most type of information that's more fitting for what we usually do on this channel. And if you're thinking, hey, PK, couldn't we just easily read that stuff ourselves? I say you could also easily read the in-game tips yourselves, but clearly not many folk did that, so... But the longer I drag this out, the more likely it is that someone will leave a comment with a timestamp of when the video really starts. So let's just begin. Mario's got a few I wanted to cover. First up, if you look into Wedding Mario's tuxedo, while his body is somewhat straightened, you can see through it, where you would normally see the rest of Mario's body. Yes, we're starting with an untextured model fact. It's very subtle, but it's definitely there. Since this is the first and only Mario alt to not feature overalls, this is the only Mario alt where this happens. For another untextured model fact, the moment Mario grabs a ledge, the first few frames will have his hat bob up and down. In these moments, you can actually see into the hat area, and here we'll notice that Mario has no hair modeled. Actually, he has nothing here. His head is empty. This even happens with the Builder alt costume, and here it seems like we can even see the texture of the bottom of the hat, which looks wackier. Though this doesn't happen with the Wedding alt, but I guess it makes up for that with the previous entry. Also, this really nice trivia entry about how Smash Ultimate was Charles Martinet's 100th time voicing Mario in a video game. That is, 100 separate games. This is the milestone that won him the Guinness World Record of most game voiceover performances of the same character. And right now he sits at 104, a record that's likely to keep going up as the years go on, and a record that is probably going to be incredibly difficult to beat, but with how he's not only been THE voice of Mario for so long, but also with how Mario is, like, one of the most popular gaming characters ever. So I thought that was really neat how Smash Ultimate was his 100th. Next up, I couldn't find anything I thought was interesting for Donkey Kong, though I did notice that the fact that I covered a while ago, regarding how there's a hole in his head, is included and also cites my video, which made me feel pretty happy. That's how you know you made it in life when a video of yours gets cited on a wiki page, I think. As for Link, we have, wouldn't you guess it, another model texturing fact. I promise this is the last one for this video. For Link's Hero of the Wild outfit, if you look into his right arm sleeve, you'll notice a pretty apparent hole in the model. And yes, this is specific to the Hero of the Wild typed outfit, meaning this little modeling error won't appear with other models who have longer sleeves, but will appear in the other outfits with shorter sleeves. Next, I didn't find anything I really liked for Samus, but there were quite a few for Dark Samus. First, you know how Dark Samus' idle animation and just general posture is quite different from Samus, you know, more floaty. Well, an entry states that if Dark Samus uses a move that was borrowed directly from Samus, like most of her tilts and a few specials, her idle animation will briefly be Samus's, as you can see here. It's almost kind of cursed. And afterwards, she'll transition back to her normal animation. And this small transition can be interrupted at any time, so it has zero gameplay implications. I get why this happens, they probably just reuse the same animation, and thus the loop point is set towards Samus' idle animation rather than Dark Samus's. But it's kind of crazy that they just left it like that. No, it's not really a huge deal, but once you realize that this is what's happening, it is very easy to spot. Especially when compared to animations like Dash Attack or Screw Attack where the transition back into floating is way smoother. The wiki states that this is actually what happens for all Echo Fighters, except for Simon and Richter. Though in trying to see for myself, a lot of them didn't really show it? Martha and Lucina have basically identical idle animations to begin with, so it's just kind of hard to tell. And this is the same case with Pit and Dark Pit, as well as Ryu and Ken. So I can't really say for sure just by looking. But we can see this happen with Peach and Daisy. Daisy's idle animation has her arms up, while Peach's arms are down. And after using a move, there's a period where Daisy's arms stay down before she slowly raises them again. 
Oh, and with Roy and Krom, they're kind of interesting in that their idle animations both start with this exact position, and then they sort of move into their real idle stance. It's like they got a buffer of sorts, which I guess is a way to circumvent issues. So again, it's hard to say if Chrome reverts to Roy's idle animation because he's making use of that buffer stance and then he goes to normal, so... But they are correct about how Simon and Richter do not do this. Richter's animation has a faster bob than Simon's, and that is maintained even after he uses a move, from what I'm able to tell. Additionally, it's mentioned how the animation where you carry a heavy item puts Dark Samus on her feet as opposed to her usual floating. Though this could be less of an oversight and more of just a normal decision, I guess putting more weight onto Dark Samus here. And this also mentions how the animation of her walking or dashing off the ledge is borrowed from Samus as well, which I can kind of see there's like a split change in positioning, though it is pretty subtle. Next, you know how when Dark Samus runs, she floats obviously, right? This therefore makes a whirring sound instead of usual footsteps. However, the wiki states that if she carries a shooting item while she's shooting it, she is floating, but her movement creates footstep sounds. This happens with any shooting item, but only while you're shooting it, not just carrying it. Except for the daybreak. So anything that causes this specific animation. It's kind of weird and is pretty likely an oversight. Next, for Yoshi, it's mentioned how all of the Yoshi alts can be found in the Stampede Final Smash, except for his crafted costume, you know, the fuzzy one. Now, I'm pretty sure this is something I've gone over on the channel before, but I bring it up because this prompt has a source that states that the textures for the alt actually are in the game's files, for the Final Smash. But despite that, it still doesn't appear, which is interesting. Also, if Yoshi does a back throw of a heavy item, for a few frames, you'll see him go into an idle animation with his back turned to the screen, which we can very clearly see is different from normal, until he very suddenly goes back. This is likely because the animation was carried over from Smash 4, and in that game they had specialized animations to have characters always facing the screen. Next, this isn't really a gameplay thing, but the wiki brings up how, despite Kirby never being captured by Gleam, he actually appears in spirit battles. Quite a lot. It mentions how, apparently, Sakurai talks about this in an interview once, and how at some point during World of Light, Kirby gets analyzed or whatever, and that's how he becomes a spirit host. I don't really know how that works, but that's what they say. Apparently, World of Light itself is actually consistent enough with this to where Kirby becomes a spirit host in only the later half of the journey. This would explain a pretty important thing, since Kirby has some of the most spirit battle appearances out of any character, the wiki says 60, and I'm not sure how up to date this is, but it's still a lot. Which I guess could make sense, since Kirby could have piqued Gleam's interest with how he survived, thus warranting more use, but I don't know. Next, for Fox, the wiki mentions how the after images of his Fox illusion use the design from Smash 4. Looking at it, it's kinda hard to tell, but with how the image is a solid color, but the biggest difference that I noticed between the after image and the current Fox design is in the boots. In the after image, we can sort of see some straps pointing outwards, whereas this is not to be found in the current Fox model. And this is also the same for Falco and his Falco Phantasm, with the same bootstrap discrepancy and whatnot. And I'm sure there's a few other areas of difference that one could point out, but this one alone is good enough for me, especially considering how many times I've heard about this fact, so I'm willing to believe it. So while it's hard to notice, these after images are from their old designs. Pretty neat. Next up is Pikachu. First, there's an entry that mentions how Pikachu is the only character to have a different facial expression for every single type of grab miss. When he misses a standing grab, he looks shocked and scared. When he misses a dash grab, he looks frustrated. And when he misses a pivot grab, he just kind of looks neutral. Now this isn't even something I thought about in the first place, but I guess every character has a certain facial expression that they do for a few frames if their grab whiffs. And normally this expression is the same per grab type. But with Pikachu, it's different for all three. The only other character who seemed to change it up is DDD, whose dash grab and pivot grab have the same normal agape mouth look, but if he misses a standing grab, he is extra surprised by it. In the book, he mentions Squirtle's pivot grab as the one that's different, but this does the same shock expression as the other grabs from what I see, so I don't really know what they're talking about. And next, it's mentioned how Pikachu's voice list breaks the quote unquote rule against duplicate voices being placed. This is in regards to two specific victory screen animations. One where Pikachu jumps, Pikachu wins! and another where he's sleeping. Pikachu wins! 
Voice 24 is his normal sleeping sound, and Voice 33 is a sound probably from the Victory animation. The only difference here is volume, though you'd have to wonder if that warrants a whole second entry of the same sound. And for the jump sound, Voice 26 is shared with Voice 32. Again, the only difference being volume. But this is also shared with Voice 3, I felt. They all sound identical to me, again, only difference being volume. So this one has three different entries, kinda weird. Oh yeah, speaking of weird. For Luigi, an entry states how when he blocks an attack of any form, his shielding animation will change into a Smash 4 pose. And the change is pretty noticeable too. I find this pretty interesting, since Fox used to have this same issue. But it was patched out in update 7.0.0 it seems. It's kinda weird that they patched out Fox's, but not Luigi's. And I do believe that this fact pertains to other characters in the cast as well, though I'm sure they'll also be mentioned in future wiki entries. So if the series continues, we can mention them as we go. Next, an entry mentions a facial glitch with Luigi, if he's under the effects of either Super Spicy Curry or the curse from Aha slash Aegon. His normal cursed expression is this, and it follows him for most of his neutral state. However, when he's specifically charging his green missile, this cursed facial expression gets mixed up with his normal charge expression, and we get a weird amalgamation of the two. With the super spicy curry, his expression turns into one of more surprise. And the same glitch happens when charging the green missile. There's this weird overlap and it looks really glitchy. This only happens when he's charging. Once you let go of the green missile, it goes back to normal. And for the super spicy curry specifically, It'll also glitch out if you use this forward air. Which is weird because the curse effect does not get glitched out here. So I'm not sure what that discrepancy is, but yeah. And if you were wondering, when given both the cursed effect and the spicy effect, the spicy expression takes priority on all accounts, regardless of which order you got the effects in. Next, a tip mentions how the pop sound effect of Luigi pulling his head out of the wall after using green missile is actually improperly timed with the move. You can hear it for yourself. <laughs> This is likely because the animation apparently got sped up coming into Smash Ultimate, and they probably just forgot to match the sound effect with it. And lastly for Luigi, this entry mentions how if he gets countered by Mii Swordfighter's blade counter while he's facing left, after the counter, his back will be facing the screen. And it'll stay this way as long as you don't turn around or use grab. And getting hit does not take you out of this state unless you get hit in a way that turns you around. I always love wonky glitches like this. It's incredibly goofy and is actually insanely easy to execute. So I'm surprised it got away from the development team for so long. But considering the game is probably done getting updates, or at the very least, substantial ones, I assume any glitches I've gone over in this video and in future videos are probably going to stay that way. Which I like, because glitches are fun. Moving on, this entry mentions how Nessa's current official artwork strongly resembles a hoax that was going on back in the Smash 4 days that faked a reveal of Ness in that game. I do have very vague memories of how they heavily delayed the reveal of Ness as a playable character in that game, so I guess folk were getting antsy and making these types of fake reveals. <laughs> now obviously I have no idea if this comparison is at all intentional or not, but it's still pretty funny to point out. Next, it's mentioned how the back of the Red Captain Falcon alt reads Bloodhawk, but used to read Hellhawk until it was changed prior to release. The funny thing is, if you change the game's language to Japanese, the alt will go back to reading Hellhawk, which is pretty cool. Though what I find most interesting is that this seems to be the only language option where this happens. Even going to another language that is still very different from English, like, you know, Korean, they still censor the word Hell and just use Bloodhawk. And from what I gather, this is consistent with how it works in the F-Zero games. It's Hellhawk in Japanese and Bloodhawk otherwise. Though I guess I'm just surprised that other non-English languages still have it read Bloodhawk rather than Hellhawk like the original language. It's still pretty interesting. If there's anything else like lore-wise about that, please let me know. Next, still on Captain Falcon, an entry mentions how the very first hit of his up smash is actually missing its hit sound. You can kind of hear it for yourself. <laughs> I found a weird spot where, if you get hit by the very tip of each hit through the help of the timer, we actually can hear a normal hit sound effect where it should be. There are other sound effects that go on during this and it's pretty fast, so it's easy to miss, 
But I'm definitely not going to unhear it anytime soon. Or uh, rather, un-not hear it. And lastly for today's video, with Jigglypuff's wiki, it mentions how Jigglypuff is the only character whose item throw multiplier is lowered to 0.95 times. That is, whenever they throw an item, it's weaker than what it should be. However, I'm not going to go too deep into that. While the wiki doesn't cite me, I made a whole entire video that deeply covers this topic and more, which I'll link down in the description and all that. So if you liked today's video, be sure to check that out too, and anything else on my channel. I'm sure you like everything. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe and like and comment and other mandatory cliche YouTuber things. Trust me, it actually helps. And yeah, that's the video. Overall, I learned a decent amount of new and interesting things from this, and I hope y'all did too. There were a few areas of fault that I ran into. Like on Mario's wiki, there's an entry that states that there's a chance his face will flatten when hit really hard on the head, similar to how his face flattens when he gets screen KO'd. But I could never get it to happen no matter what I did, so I'm forced to doubt that this is valid, or at the very least, maybe it got patched out. And there were some things I didn't mention because I lacked the resources to properly prove them, like this entry of Captain Falcon's wiki which mentions the animations of him moving forward and backward in the air, and how the ones used for his first jump should actually be used for his second jump and vice versa. But I didn't really know how to prove that that was the case. Like, I didn't know how to show that these turning animations were meant for the second jump and stuff. You could argue that the animation doesn't look very smooth and maybe that's proof enough, but I don't know, I'll leave that to y'all. Otherwise, I thought it was very fun. So as usual, if this gets good enough reception, I'll gladly make another video like this. And with that, I'd like to thank my Patreon Scully, Burbo, Rain, Seven Seven Hundred, and everyone else for their support. Stay casual, and I'll see y'all later.